Hi guys, um, so this is um, your Maxwell Coaching Coaches on Friday night. Hello, <laughs> happy Friday. Yeah, we've got our Chris got his wine. Cheers. <laughs> um, so um, we thought we'd do a bit of a Q&A session um, just because we've had a few questions um, from our athletes and stuff like that um, with the current situation going on. Um, so we thought we'd do a little bit of a Q&A session. So ping questions at us. Um, you can text us, you can do whatever, um, and hopefully we can answer as we're going through. Mm. Shall I read the first question? Yeah, go on then. We've had some questions via Instagram, so we'll start off with those first. Okay, we've got uh, a question from Nick. What are the worst and best athletes to coach? Pet hates and best attributes. Well, that's a great question. <laughs> um, from my perspective, the best coaches, the best, the best coaches, the best athletes to coach are the ones that basically the ones that communicate the best, um, the ones that um, feed back to us, the ones that um, try their best. They, you know, they just they don't necessarily tick all the green boxes. They don't necessarily, you know, win races. They're the ones that just, you know, they're great at communicating they're great it's a whole experience between the athlete and the coach it isn't just hi jason <laughs> and nikki's on <laughs> and as well. nikki's on as well and coach nikki there are two um associate coaches um so yeah that's from my perspective that's that's the best athlete to coach in my opinion yep i'll agree with that certainly uh, the communication giving feedback so it's not necessarily those athletes who can tick all the boxes, but certainly get in contact early, um, ask first. Hi, Nikki. Get some, get some uh, feedback on how we can sort of change things around rather than sort of switching things around themselves and, and end up doing two hard days together. And yeah, I think like, that's really important. I think it's definitely a relationship, the athlete-coach relationship. It isn't just our, you know... Um, the ones that love to wear purple, Jason says. Yes, absolutely. You know how we love our purple. Um, <laughs> it, it's an, it, the athlete-coach relationship isn't just us telling the athlete what to do. That's not how it works. Um, we love athletes that question, you know, why have we set something? Um, why, why, why are we doing that today? You know, what's, what sort of strength and conditioning sessions should I do? And they're the ones that, you know, they tell us, you know, if... They can't do a session that day or oh, i need to move it to that day should i still do that session um that's what that's the best athlete really yeah um the worst athlete the reverse of that really the, absolutely the reverse <laughs> of that the athlete that doesn't communicate the um athlete that we have to nudge all the time um that we don't hear from um obviously there is kirsty sent <laughs> Kirsty and Murphy, thank you very much. Good luck. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's it, it's basically us having to constantly nudge. Um, hi, Bear. Hi, Bear. Um, to just check check in with them all the time. And I guess that's, that is a tricky one, though. It's not because we do coach athletes who, you know, are, are very introverted. So, you know, I wouldn't say that's definitely the worst athlete. The, definitely the worst athlete is... The ones who just tell us nothing. They don't give feedback anything. They don't... Is that... Is that hard? Well, it makes it harder, doesn't it? It makes it harder for us to coach. Yeah, definitely. So... Um, and for them, they, they wouldn't get the best value out of the coaching either. No, I agree. So, um, hi, Manfred. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. All right. Yeah, I think that's... Anything that's else? Any more there. questions covering that bit? Just post any quail comments as we're going... Um, and um, Coach Nikki asks, has put up a nice question. Um, not the best internet here, Morven. I hope you're getting it. Okay. Um, what's the best top five strength and conditioning that can be done at this current moment? So I'm assuming Nikki means while we're, we're, we're dealing with, obviously, this nasty virus going on. Um, so that's a tricky one. Obviously, we are missing... Quite a few elements, particularly triathletes, are missing swimming. Um, so that's something to focus on. Yeah, so the um, just posted something for the triathlon club on 
swimming and, and some, of, some of the exercises that people can focus on there. Uh, so when you're missing your, your swimming pool, um, there are a few different exercises. It obviously doesn't replace it, but it, it's quite good just to try and keep some of that strength uh, associated with swimming. Yeah, yeah. Lots of uh, new joiners here, so that's looking good. Yeah. Um, and obviously, it, you know, it, it is make, make the, be the best out of the situation. So yeah. we are going to have extra time to perhaps focus on s and C, focus on some of the skills, focus on things that perhaps uh, you've not had time to do before. Yeah. Uh, we talked a little bit about challenges as well. If you can't do a pull up or can't do some balancing or whatever, it's a great time to challenge yourself and, and try and improve yourself uh, during this time. Yeah, definitely. I think, you know, as Chris said, with the swimming, focus on your upper body strength. Um, focus a little bit on your pull with those ex with, with some swimming exercises. Um, there's loads of videos out there. We'll try and do some as well. Um, and I think from a running perspective, um, focus on those elements that, you know, I've talked about in running sessions. Um, challenge yourself. So as Chris has said, um, when we were demoing the drills in the garden, <laughs> he can't do the straight leg drill when they're with a high knee. So he's been practicing that. Um, <laughs> in the garden, he still can't do it. So maybe that's his little challenge, is to, is to practice going from the straight leg into the high knee. Um, Jason's put now is the best time to take a more detailed approach to committing quality time to strength and conditioning. Absolutely right. Um, that's, that's a really good valid thing. Actually, if you've been really struggling, if you're working at home now and you're not having to commute to the office, that gives you an extra 30 minutes to an hour every single day that you could commit to doing your strength and conditioning. Um, and you know, keep it simple. The strength and conditioning doesn't have to be amazing. It's literally just focusing on those little things. If you've got, you've had a niggle for a year, focus on little elements that can really sort out that niggle. You know, if you've got slightly tight hamstrings, then maybe take up some yoga and do some of the glute bridges, you know, the walking out glute bridges and really get those hamstrings really strong. Um, focus a little bit on, you know, things like um, picking stuff off the floor. So deadlifts, focus on balance. And there's so many people who can't balance on one leg. That's a fundamental thing. Really focus on your balance. If you can't do a press up, there's a challenge. See if you can focus on five press ups. You know, if you can't do a chin up, there's another thing. Okay, sometimes you can't get to a chin up, but maybe you can, you know, get to, well, the, all, the, all the outdoor gyms are closed, aren't they? But if you've got somewhere where you can do a pull up, uh, if you've got kids at home and they've got a swing in the garden, you can do, a, you can do chin ups on there. So, um, yeah, so Nikki's kind of put there, let your coaches know what equipment you have available. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. What, what have you got available, but then also what can you use uh, as alternatives? Yeah. Uh, and of course, I think just uh, Amazon is still just about going, so uh, you can still order a few uh, bands or, or basics there as well. Yeah, I think Nick managed to get hold of some um, resistance bands today from Decathlon. So he managed to get hold of a 45, the equivalent of 45 kilograms. So if you make it tight, it's the equivalent of 45 kilograms. So you can do squats with that. You can use it for other resistance work. So that's great. You know, just keep your options open. Um, guy we coach, Ed, has posted up some videos of him doing squats holding his dog. You know, a dog. It depends on the size of your dog. But you can have a dog that, you know, could weigh up to 30 kilograms. There you are. That's your deadlift. Or your squat with your dog. Just use what you've got. Babies, children, anything like that. Wives. <laughs> Wives. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, you've just got to, you know, think outside the box a little bit. Um, I did the other day because um, I'm one of these really lucky people who's shielded. Um, so I'm, I'm going to be really careful. So um, I said, well, I'd quite like to do a second bit of exercise. So I did half an hour with my weighted vest walking up and down the stairs. It made Chris a little anxious, actually. <laughs> but it worked really well for um, ultra runners. What a perfect way to get some resistance work in. Yeah, you could hold dumbbells in your hand, some baked bean tins, anything you've got. Um, march up and down the stairs, down the stairs, really focus on good arms, that sort of thing is really, really good, I think. Um, yeah, and yeah, just, just improvise. I think just focus on weaknesses at the moment is a really mm -hmm. good thing to do. And basics, balance, um, perfect, a perfect squat, 
um, do your car phrases, all the things that you know you've said. I don't have time to do that. I think in answer to that question. Um, and Coach Nikki has also asked: Is it easy or hard to plan training sessions at the moment um, for our athletes? Um, yeah, it, tricky. Um, I think the um, the kind of associated question, which we don't have the answers for at no. the moment, is kind of how long you should be doing particularly like runs or cycles outside of what's kind of socially acceptable I suppose is the word yeah um, and that's quite a difficult balance at the moment isn't it and and also also thinking about people's well-being sort of physical well-being in terms of if you do too many long sessions you don't want your immune system to uh, be uh, um, what's the right word um, compromised compromised <laughs> Yeah, compromise. So, um, yeah, that, I think that's a difficult balance as well as um, for a triathlete, obviously swimming's out. So it's really just trying to do what we can with indoor cycling, some outdoor cycling uh, and running and just trying to balance in the strength and conditioning. So definitely, definitely. Very hard also because we don't really know when we're going to come out of this. We still, there's a still a lot of races that are on, although you think they're probably gone, then they're not currently. Yeah. Personally, Ironman UK in July, That well, staff's actually in June, is still on at the moment. Yeah, you kind of think that they're going to go, but you're kind of in that halfway house. Of, yeah, yeah. Shall I train? Shall I just back off? It, yeah. it is quite difficult. It, it is really difficult. And with the similar with the ultra runners, um, we've got races that are still showing as being live, um, going, you've got 100 milers. I mean, do I train my athletes to do 100 miles? Personally, I, it's a tricky one. So I'm trending to do little back-to-backs rather than um, big, big days out in the hills because um, it, it's really tricky, I think. I don't really want to want to set sessions like that that you know send an athlete out into hills where they might obviously have <laughs> a prison enjoying his wine I hope everyone else is enjoying their friday night um I, I, that's a really tricky thing because you don't want to have a fall you don't you know you don't want to be driving to you know mountains or anything like that so trying to find somewhere where you can do your training it might just have to be loops in a safe place where you know you can say train safely um jason said how would you say oh it's disappeared Stay focused Stay focus with right. athletes having their races postponed i think that's i think that's shot off before i saw it jace <laughs> um so staying focused this is a tricky one hopefully it's a lot of the athletes that we're coaching have got races that have been postponed hi pip okay. <laughs> um a lot of a lot of athletes have had their races postponed to the autumn so the marathons particularly and quite a few of the ultras. And so that's given them some focus. So they're just kind of gone into base training. I think that's the key thing. Mental health, absolutely essential at the minute. I think you're going out, and I think as we go forward, we might get more restricted if you're following, you know, France, for example, they're only allowed to run one kilometer from their house. And so they're being very imaginative. Um, I've got a friend in Chamonix, and he is running laps around his garden. You know, if we're getting to that point, then, you know, we're going to have to be super imaginative with the training. Um, but at the minute, we're just setting, you know, we're focusing a little bit more on speed, heels that are close to home, um, that sort of thing. Um, drill sets, strength and conditioning, just focusing on just keeping them motivated. Um, we're getting a lot of, oh, I, I just couldn't, be, I wasn't in the mood for that speed session today. That's totally fine. You know, we're setting it to keep them motivated, but they don't feel like doing that session that day. We've been very clear just go out and run, do some, if you feel like you feel, feel like you're improving as the run goes on, just stick in a few strides, stick in some drills, um, anything that keeps you going. And by the time you come back from the run, you'll feel loads better. And then maybe the next day you can, you can do the speed session. It, but it doesn't matter at the moment. It really doesn't matter. It's more about us being there as coaches to help them through it. Um, and just trying to maintain a little bit of fitness um, the best we can. Um, so that if we do come out the other side and, and the autumn races do do happen, then they're going to be best placed to achieve, you know, what they can in those races. I think that's the answer to that question. Yeah, and I think, um, you know, in these days of technology, so for cyclists, there's Zwift. Um, it's not for everybody, but uh, you can create meetups and, and that can be quite motivating just to... To at least just sort of exercise with other people. Definitely. Uh, Zwift actually has races if you if you're really that way inclined. I've done a few. They're quite good fun. Um, 
silly what's some of them, but uh, it just mixes it up a bit, uh, gives you something else to think about. And uh, Caroline, and Caroline, our um, re- our vet that we coach. Has just put up. She's still at work. Yawn, but this is far more interesting. <laughs> oh, thanks, Caroline. That's really nice. <laughs> um, I hope I was, it's been all right, David. I hope it's been all right at work. I was just going to pick up on a couple other points, sort of going back a little bit to strength and conditioning, but also motivation. I think Jason put it up there actually about the hub. Yes. So we've uh, now just released the hub. So hopefully that will help uh, some of the athletes to. Um, pick up on some of those strength and conditioning skills yeah there's obviously loads of different videos out there as well for the, for those of you who don't have access to that at the moment yeah um, on youtube and so forth yeah and we'll and you can just ping us questions because we will answer them we will try and do a q a quite regularly so if you feel like you've not answered something now you know or you've suddenly thought oh i meant to ask that that's fine you know we will do some more so ping questions to us and then we've got some fodder for next time or we'll, we can just answer questions, to be honest. It's, it's that sort of time. Uh, and just the other thing to say, you know, as well as strength and conditioning, kind of yoga type of exercises are all very good for Yeah, there's mental great well-being. yoga sessions. So, um, um, and some online ones. I think Gemma's actually watching. I think Gemma, yeah, Gemma's Gemma, running ones. Yeah, Gemma, um, who's quite local, is doing, I think, your session's um, Wednesdays, I think, Gemma. And um, We've got Kelly, who's local as well. I know she's doing some really good medita- meditation stuff as well. I think that's something, you know, if you're feeling a little... I mean, myself, I've had... I Last week, I had... And I've never had a panic attack before, ever. And I was running, and I had to stop. And I was trying... Usually a hill that I can run up um, really easily, and I had to stop, and I couldn't breathe. It was proper, like, panic attack. Um, and... I know a lot of people who, again, who've never had them before this week have had them. So I think if that's something you're struggling with, then stuff like yoga and just sitting, you know, doing some sort of form of meditation. I think Kelly's doing um, a meditation session every Saturday. I think that's a great thing to do. Um, Yeah, just try and find ways. Don't look at the news. Don't, you know, all Mm. things like that. I think that's really, really important at the moment. And, And ironically, given we're on Facebook... Try to stay off social media a bit because that can get you down. I know, as well. just kind of use things like this, I suppose. That is, yeah, try and <laughs> <laughs> a video watching Chris drinking wine. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Speaking of which, <laughs> um, have we got any other questions for any from anybody? Um, just trying to think what else we can talk about. We've not had any more questions. Um, so Bev's put, um, she's looked at the hub, so we coach Bev. Um, or Nikki coaches Bev actually. Um, Bev's had you know her own problems with her ankles and stuff, so she is still still training and still keeping motivated. Um, and she's had a good look at the hub last night. Oh, thank you, Bev. I'm glad you enjoyed it. So, um, so yeah, our athlete hub has just been created. Um, oh, trainers. Is that you would like to talk uh, us to talk about trainers, Bev? <laughs> Um, okay, I think Bev would like us to talk, talk about trainers. <laughs> I like the little picture. I like the picture. So I think Bev is trying to say, should we buy special trainers or should we do strength and conditioning, maybe? Yes, please. Yes, please. Okay, so we have had questions on this before. So should you go to a shop? And obviously at the moment you're not going to be able to go to a shop to do this. Um, should we buy trainers with support or not? My view is no, um, I wore orthotics for 10 years and I actually think to my detriment, to be honest, I think if I had focused for six months really hard on strength and conditioning, instead of shoving orthotics into my shoes um, and trying to carry on as normal, I would, wouldn't have had some of the injuries that I had. Do you agree? I think most injuries come from and pronation and stuff. That that doesn't include, obviously, if you've got deformities, if you've got, you know, arthritis, corns in your feet, all that sort of stuff. That's totally different. Um, but it, most the, most foot issues come from further up in the body. So you're looking at hips and stuff like that. And it's far more important, I think, get yourself a pair of trainers that are well, you know, I wouldn't say well cushioned, but have got a kind of integral stability, but not massive anti-pronation or anti-supination um find yourself a shoe that's stable 
has a little bit of cushioning, but generally a neutral shoe. It's better, I think, to replace your trainers more often than keep them going for you know years and years and years than it is to shove an orthotic into a shoe and try and put loads of miles into it. I also think if you are struggling with lower limb injuries, you generally need to look at what your hips are doing. So are, are you dropping down? Have you got all of your glute muscles working for you? Is your glute, are your glutes activating or are you relying completely on your calf muscles? That sort of thing I think is more important. Does that answer your question, Beth? <laughs> <laughs> I think it is a difficult one, isn't it? And, there, and sort of, um, there's been a lot of... Uh... And Nikki's put rotate trainers, which is a really good point, actually. Yes, yes. Um, so I know that means more money, but actually it's an initial investment, actually. I think what you need to do is to buy a few trainers and then don't wear them, you know, day on, day on, day on, day on. You know, I'm really lucky I do have a lot of trainers. Um, someone's put any advice Sorry, on how far you should go. God, Did you yeah, clock that one? that one? Um, that was Kirsty. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think it's better to rotate your trainers is what I think Nikki's put up. Yeah. Yeah, so I think it was Kirsty. It went, went across quite quickly. It was just asking, I suppose, going back to the point we said about sort of how much should we be doing outside right now? And it, and it is a very difficult question, I think. Um, what I would say in this area, um, in terms of strain on the SA NHS right now, should the worst happen um i was at ruh for a different reason this week and actually it's really quiet yeah um but we certainly do have to be I think, conscious of that and no one goes out cycling to aiming to fall off or anything like that but of no. course it can happen yeah for now i think i would keep the bikes sort of relatively short and uh in areas where you kind of know the roads uh I wouldn't go any sort of down any dangerous descents or anything like that or sort of road quality and definitely that, that, you know a lot of potholes and things like that I'd probably just try and stay on safe roads yeah um the, the roads generally are quieter but you know there's still are a reasonable number of cars out there um so yeah that would be my guidance at the moment it clearly can change quite quickly um and you know maybe in a couple of weeks time maybe it'd be enforced upon us that we won't actually be able to get out cycling like in the continent definitely and i think that goes the same with um running to be honest i think you need to stay on surfaces really that you're not going to fall over on um so try to avoid really technical trail if you've got a really technical trail just and Carol's just put i'm about to cycle home through central london <laughs> but that's so that you don't have to go on the tube isn't it caro so that's a really tricky compromise isn't yeah. it so um, is it safer than the safer tube? Safer than the tube, yeah. <laughs> Sorry about my fingers. <laughs> um, something about clogging up. Oh, yeah, Pip's put, I mean, Pip had a bad accident last year, so I can totally understand that. She's worried yeah. about falling off. I think the compromise is maybe invest in some InZwift if you can. Um, try and do some Zoom with some of your friends. Sit on, you know, and have a chat and kind of push each other along. I think maybe that's probably the best compromise at the moment yeah, i think yeah as i say in this area maybe with when the sun's shining nice dry roads yeah. you can probably get away with an hour or so on the bike and and not yeah. have any problems but it, yeah. is, it is a very difficult decision and i think essentially a personal decision i think it's a personal in, decision. until it maybe gets taken out of our hands I, I agree i think limit yourself to two hours if you go out and stay on familiar roads uh the, the country lanes i've noticed are are quieter i think yeah. at the yeah. moment and i think that's good um and obviously, you know, give people a wide berth, as you know, with the same with running, really. Um, technical trail, yeah, avoid technical trail. Don't run for more. I, at the moment, I would say no more than two hours. We haven't been told, we haven't been given anything from the government to say you can only go out for an hour at the moment, which is what they are, have had on the continent. So um, they've had go out for a maximum of an hour. So, um, so we will wait and see. And obviously, if we hear that then we will obviously change plans accordingly um and i think if you want to do something like a brick session i think you probably ought to do bike inside run outside yeah or something like that yeah i've seen that on strava today where someone has actually done a brick session outside which yeah. is a little bit naughty really i think yeah um so um claire's just put up 
appreciate most of you are more dedicated than me, but I'm finding it hard to motivate myself to do anything, which is totally acceptable. Um, I, I think, I, I do think that's, it is really hard and I just, think just try and find things that you enjoy really yeah it, it, hopefully you do get some sort of endorphin buzz out of exercise um so really just try and find things that that do motivate you I mean Bev's just put the weather's really helped her motivated yeah. she's got out um it's like you know, she's got out with you getting out with your kids I think just get out go for a little run with your kids you know if you can um we've been we joining together haven't we we've run together yeah <laughs> which um and which, which you don't enjoy <laughs> i do enjoy i do enjoy um and i've been doing some joe wick stuff pe with the kids which is quite fun <laughs> um trying to get them to not kick the telly and stuff like that and I, you just have to do stuff like that i you know we've been out in the garden the kids had to do an assault course and you kind of joined in and did some basketball just just do stuff you know to keep you all motivated as families i think that's the most important thing um, Jason's put it's a great time now to perhaps to focus on quality and qu that quality not quantity I think I definitely agree um, get out and do some faster stuff some hills stuff like that um, focus on drills the only exception I'd say to that I kind of a discussion about to Sam with this one is I think on the bike yes indoors but indoors not outdoors, definitely yeah definitely. that would be uh, a higher risk of falling off if you're going to try and do some reps on the bike outside <laughs> you haven't heard how much one of my kin's modes about running. <laughs> yeah, that's tricky. But... <laughs> well, even well, even ours, I moan sometimes. Yeah, I do. Joshua's yeah, always yeah. got a moan, and yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So just, I, I think just you're just gonna have to find ways to motivate yourself. Be that joining in a Zoom class, um, that a friend set up, um, yeah, watching some YouTube clips. Trying to do some yoga that way, stuff like that. <laughs> Love thy turbo. Love thy <laughs> turbo. Yeah, I definitely, I think. All right, Emily's come along. Hi, Emily. Just in time for the Love Thy Turbo. <laughs> yeah. Emily's got a spin bike now, so she's going to be happy inside. Yeah, that's good. You didn't see me and my hubby last time we ran together. <laughs> Claire's put up <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Um, circuit sessions can be fun for kids, definitely. Um, that's what the kids did. My kids did in the garden. They set up a little circuit session. Um, and they did some maths with it, so they couldn't move on to the next thing unless they did some maths. So that's a great, a great way to um, kind of, yeah. keep kids motivated. You know, it's hard for the kids as well. So um, kind of got to keep each other going. So I think the most important thing, obviously, hi, Emily, um, just keep... Um, your mental health is so important keep your mental health going um, if you're feeling down just go for a walk if you don't want to go for a run or a bike just use your little allotted slot to go for a walk look at some wildlife appreciate what's around you um, then the next day you might feel more motivated um, just yeah just do a roller and a stretcher session you know I, I haven't done anything today so you feel motivated um, so that's you know that's all I'm going to do I'm going to drink some wine actually <laughs> And watch a movie. Um, so, yeah, do what you you need to do, really. So, um, Come on, we've had you know, Mike and Ryan just joined. Yeah. Just as we're about to um, sign off. And I Jackie, think. yeah. <laughs> well, Haven't we got any more questions? Because um, we, we, I think we'll finish in a minute. So, I'm going to feed the kids. <laughs> and top my wine glass up. Yeah. Mmm, wine. <laughs> <laughs> um, any more questions? Um, obviously, you can um, you can watch this later. Um, and what I might do actually is write up some of these points in a post um, tomorrow. So um, if you've got any more questions you want me to answer, just ping me a text, um, a message, and I will add those you know that, those bits of information to the post. Um, thanks very much. Um, and purple love to everybody. Keep positive, um, and you know we're here for you for everybody. So just you've got anything else that you want to ask um, we'll try and do these regularly um, if the time isn't great then you know let us know what time would work and um, we'll speak to you again soon thank you very much bye bye <laughs>